Did you ever want to build an interactive web app to show how beautiful your machine learning data visualizations using Plotly, Matplotlib or whatever are and just host it on the internet? Great for you because Streamlit is here and I will show you in only 10 minutes how you can make an amazing web app that is really simple to make and deploy. Streamlit is a very simple tool that you can just basically write your entire web app into one file. The first thing you will need to do is pip install Streamlit and then you can simply import it in your favorite Python IDE with import Streamlit as ST. Cool. Um, the way you now actually run your app is by going to the terminal and saying streamlit uh, run the script. So I called it here our streamlit app.py, so this is exactly what we will be running. Let's go and start this. It will maybe take a few seconds and then there it is, boom, localhost, uh, it will open a link, you can click this one. And what you see now immediately a website opens. It is of course completely empty because we have not done anything so far. You have here several options. One here is a dark mode, which I already set. One of the really cool things about Streamlit is that you can automatically rerun or also called hot reload the code. So that basically means whenever you type something here and hit Ctrl S, here it will reload your app and you can develop much faster. With any, without any further ado, let's start by typing our first few lines. The first thing we want is a nice little beautiful image. So let's go ahead and click here, always rerun. And we see, bam, the image is there. Um, now, it maybe doesn't look so nice in all cases, especially if you have the white format on. So I'll just hit here white format, which makes the entire thing spam your entire website or your web app. Cool. Now the simple things first, first things first as it goes. How do you get text onto this web app? You have three options and a lot more. Um, I just want to show you all of them. Title, subtitle, text and so on. The like more common things you can find all of this information here in the documentation. Here in the text element, you have markdown, you have title, you have header, subhead, or caption, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, the other thing I really like is markdown and um, LaTeX. So if you're used to LaTeX, I don't know, you're coming from, acad from academia, it is really out of the box and quite nice. Um, let's just see how that looks by hitting Ctrl S. Cool. So we have here machine learning 3000, machine learning 6000 and our uh, fancy LaTeX formula. If you don't know what that means, it basically is just some math writing tool that is often used in academia, a bit like work replacement, but for people that like to program while they're using Word. Good. Uh, of course, you can now hear it here on um, Markdown, you know, simple style and just change it it to whatever you want. Great. Uh, step four will be a Pandas data frame. Of course, we all are data wizards. We are machine learning engineers and we really love our data. So let's just load up some Pandas data frame here. I got a CSV already here in my folder. And now one thing that is pretty decent when you're developing is that it has these so-called magic commands, uh, like in Jupyter when you just have an uh, empty statement, it will like in Jupyter hit this display function. And what it does here, it automatically detects that it is a pandas data frame and you see all the columns and the values that we have for this particular data frame. As you see, it is one about countries, as you may have already guessed from the, CS, uh, from the title of the CSV. Good. Let's go one step further. Or one thing that I really enjoy while working with Streamlit, you can easily debug it by just you know good old printing to the console. Here it even looks nice. So I just um, if you don't know this command, it basically just gives you the data types from a Panda state frame, and then I just took the second to fourth one, such so doesn't look too ugly on the screen. Cool. Let's make something inter interactive. Uh, what we'll do now is we'll uh, get all the columns from our data frame. So it's country, region, population, blah, blah, blah. And this here basically just selects all the floats and ints of the columns such that we can later on build an actual interactive web app to display your data. Let's go with that. 
if I hit Ctrl S, we see now I got a select box as it calls here. Um, I gave it a label, select a column, this is this one. You have some options and that is all the numeric variables that we have in this data set, birth rate, agriculture and so on. The reason is that I only selected floats and um, ints here is because we want to build something interactive and it would be a bit more annoying if the data types would change. Streamlit has a huge selection of or all the common input widgets that you find in common uh, web development like buttons, checkboxes, radio buttons, text areas, date inputs and everything. But we'll just do one for today because it's a little basic introduction to just show you what you can do. Cool, now that we can select this thing, how do we actually get the value out? Pretty simple, you just kind of put it like this, our chosen column, and it will automatically update this variable to be whatever you select here. So now it will be crops in percentage. To illustrate this, let's maybe build our first interactive little web demo. Dreamlit, like many web development tools, has the ability to containerize certain elements. The way it is done here is by columns. So you call sd.columns, you have here an entire selection of different layouts and containers like sidebar, expander, container, empty and so on, such that you can easily group things on the screen and they don't just come from the top to the bottom in any like order that you type them. Basically we are doing now three columns so that they will be free side by side and what we're going to do is metrics. Each of these metrics now does one simple thing. It has a label, this is again uh, what you'll see on top of the metric and then you give it a value. What is the value? The value is what it will display and what we are want to display are three things. We want to show once the mean, the median and the sum. The way we want to display it now is from our chosen column. So the column you select in the select box will be selected here from the data frame. Then we calculate the mean, the median and the sum. Here one small difference, it also has this nice option to uh, display delta so you can problematically display what changed between one value and another value and I'll just show you this in a second here. We got our interactive web app already ready. Let's just for example compare population. The mean population over all data points is whatever this number here is and the median is this number. Now you see this little uh, difference button here is that means that the mean is a lot higher than the median. You can also do it the other way around of course and uh, what I added here just because I didn't mention is round to one so that we don't have here like annoyingly long numbers. Cool, we already built a first web app and it's like really reactive I think. Um, like death rate, kind of interesting right, the death rate is a bit higher on the mean than in the median so there are some like heavy outliers on death rates on like really dangerous countries. If you go maybe to birth rate, the same thing, even stronger, like um, here and yeah, absolute numbers, whatever, I think it's percentage numbers. Anyway, uh, what we can do as well is, and this is one of my favorite things about Streamlit in general, it seamlessly integrates with Plotly, Matplotlib and Seaborn. Um, these are all data visualization tools that are very commonly used in Python and you can really just plot all of these things onto the screen. The way this usually works is you define your um, plotly plot here. You, I mean like with matplot you just get like some figure object back and you tune all these parameters just with like common plotly. Then what you call is st.plotly chart. You give it this figure object and you say use container with through which just again makes it visually a bit more pleasing. What will happen when we hit Ctrl S now? Yeah, it's running. This will maybe take a second the first time it runs. And there it is. Um, we got here now a plot where we have the birth rate which is our selected column against the area here uh, area in square miles and then what I did is here again for uh, when you hover over it you see that this is point is Brazil so let's maybe look for the GDP per capita who's the richest country 
it's Luxembourg and we see it is from Western Europe and we know it's a really tiny country. Which one is the first big like? So the United States is the first big and rich country and then there are only like some small thingies down here. Great, so you already know how to build a web app in just a few seconds. The last thing we'll do, and it's really just to show off, um, we'll actually show an interactive map. Another thing that Streamlit really implements very simple. The way it is done is um, you need a column latitude and longitude and then you can display points onto a world map as I'll show you in a second. Uh, to do this I had to join in another data set so don't worry about these lines. They basically just join in another CSV and merge them down here such that we have the latitude and longitude information for each country and can display them on the map. What I'm then doing is I'm sorting the values by the like column selected again, so our selection box here, and then I'm selecting the 30 most um, affected countries, so the countries with the highest value. Good, let's just start this one as well. It's running and you'll see this looks really cool. Um, we have here now GPT per capita and we can intuitively see that the most countries will be in Europe. Some will be here like I actually checked it out. It's probably the Cayman Islands who would have guessed that Aruba and here are some like tiny states like Taiwan and Hong Kong. And uh, yeah, these are the 30 most uh, how you say, uh, richest countries in the world. Then we have here the death rate, for example. Um, we already checked it out here. We have Swaziland, Botswana, and so on. Just intuitively, it's mostly in Africa and uh, here Afghanistan, you know. Uh, a bit more aggressive uh, zones and maybe a bit more plagued by natural diseases. I hope you're as excited about Streamlit as I am. And please like and subscribe such that a brand new audience can discover exactly what you learn so much from. If you're looking for more cool Python packages, I can highly recommend my video on the last 20 Python packages you will ever need. And if you want to improve your performance in all your machine learning models, my video on the most important machine learning packages will definitely suit you.